What's up guys and girls? What's up people? So this episode is gonna be a little different than normal, right? Obviously I'm sitting on a couch making a speech to the camera, which is always strange. Interesting way to start, but you'll see once I get going what the hell I'm talking about. So this episode is about our trip to a Ram Dass workshop. Me and Laura have never done anything like this before. We're not super woo woo people. I know Laura teaches yoga, but I would say she leans to be more grounded than uh, kind of into the woo-woo mystical stuff. Not that we don't love it, you know, like I've read plenty of uh, strange books in my time from Alan Watts to Thich Nhat Hanh to Ram Dass, you know, I'm not scared of it, but it's just not something we do. And we definitely don't pay money to go to stuff like this. So Ram Dass is in the end of his life here in Maui and uh, nobody really knows how much longer he's gonna be. His health is not good. And uh, so when we saw that he was gonna be doing a retreat here in Maui, we figured we should probably go. Um, I pulled up the link and I showed Laura what it was and I was like, do you think we should go to this? And she was like, I don't know. And I was like, I don't know either. And it was like, I think it was 225 bucks for a whole weekend. And that was a lot of money for us. And we were like, shit, I don't know, maybe, yes. Then we both started thinking like, if we don't go and Ram Dass dies and we never went and saw him and we never heard him talk, would we be bummed? And we both were like, yes. So. We decided to go, we bought the tickets. The workshop was a little bit strange, right? It, it was it was about death and dying. And um, it was Ram Dass, Roshi Joan Halifax, and Frank Ostatensky. I can't really say his name very good. Let me, let me, let me make sure I'm saying his name right. Frank Ostatensky. It was Ram Dass, Roshi Joan Halifax, and Frank Ostatensky. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but I'm a big fan of him. I heard him on Sam Harris' podcast. Um, they did a podcast on like death, basically. And um, he's the founder. Well, I don't know if he's the founder, but he's been working in Zen Hospice in San Francisco, one of the first uh, non-religious based hospice centers in the country. And he's been working there forever. And uh, he has a ton of awesome experience working with like people and death and dying and when I heard him on Sam Harris, it really intrigued me. I actually, I'd never heard of the guy. I heard the Sam Harris podcast. I loved it. I sent it to people. It's actually on my blog. You can go read it from back then. I was sending it to my friends and I'm like, oh my God, this podcast is so awesome. And everyone was like, why are you sending me a podcast? I'm dying. We're 30, you know? For me, what I really liked about him on Sam Harris was that they were talking about how if you, if you really look dying in the face, you work with the dying, these people, they see the, the reality of mortality, right? I didn't mean for that to rhyme, that was weird. They see the reality in dying. It's not some far off idea. When you really embrace that, that we're all gonna die, it helps you live more fully in the moment and do things that maybe you wouldn't do if you think you have forever. And the more that you embrace the idea of dying instead of shying away from it, the more that you can see that our time is truly finite and that it's important to be doing the things that we love. So for me, it just like, it resonated pretty deeply with me when I heard it. And I was like, hell yeah, that's exactly what we're doing already. Like we're already into this. Like we are all about doing what we want to be doing now and not putting it off into the future. And some people might think it's crazy, but for all I know, I could die literally tomorrow. And what if I spent all day today doing things to prep for 20 years down the road and I didn't do a single thing today that I want to do? That would be a bummer for me and I would not die happy. So hearing Frank on that podcast with Sam Harris got me super stoked. And then I heard Roshi Joan Halifax on Duncan Trussell's podcast. And I really liked her on Duncan Trussell's podcast. And so when I saw Frank, Roshi Joan Halifax and Ram Dass doing a retreat together on death and dying. It just all came together perfectly for me. And I was like, yeah, dude, for sure. We need to go to this. So when me and Laura pulled the trigger and bought the tickets, I knew it was the right thing to do. The, the workshop was on death and dying and it was geared towards people who work in hospice or with people who are sick and probably going to die. And um, it, it was kind of funny that we just, we have nothing to do with that, right? We're just two 30 year olds who are interested in the spirituality and the idea of embracing this to live more present. So we decided to go to this workshop and we didn't really know what to expect, right? We didn't know if it would be like literally for employees of hospice and be like completely useless for us, but we figured there would probably be something worthwhile in the workshop that would be worth checking out. And so, so we went, you know, kind of unsure of what to expect, but hoping for the best. So we went on a Friday night and we drove up there and this is what happened. All right, we 
We are headed up the road, up country, to the Makawao Community Church. Union Church. We're headed up country to the Makawao Union Church. <laughs> to the Makawao. We're headed up country to the Makawao Union Church, where we're going to this weekend workshop. Skeptical, but uh, I'll report back. Gonna see Brown Taz. Hopefully. Woo! Yeah, we have papers because we needed to print out our tickets for this event. How old school is that? the first night I was pretty excited to see that Ram Das showed up. He had actually been in the hospital uh, the night before Thursday and he had been there all week and he was super sick and they weren't sure if he was going to be able to come. They had prepped us all with an email saying he might not be able to show up for the whole weekend and it might just be Frank and Roshi John Halifax so we were like okay no worries maybe we miss Ram Das, you know and so when we got there seeing that he was there it was awesome. Um, he even spoke, you know, his his speaking ability isn't what it used to be because of his illness, um, but he's still fully able to put sentences together and it was awesome to hear, you know, somebody I've been listening to and reading for years. It was amazing. I was really stoked to see that and I uh, wasn't expecting it because they had kind of told us it's not going to happen. So we went home, slept, and then the next morning we got up and went there again. Day two of the workshop. You probably see the crazy looking church back there in the background, old Hawaiian church. Um, yeah, it's raining, but we're gonna be inside, so it's not bad. We'll see what happens today. Let's go.
there a lot. I had some interesting experiences. It was both very hippie, but not too hippie, while still being pretty hippie. <laughs> so, on the second day, it was a bit more intense than the first day. On the first day, it was kind of just talking. We didn't really do any exercises. On the second day, uh, we were started off again with music by Gina Sala, and it was pretty awesome. My first instinct would be to not go with it, right? To not sing, to not like chant, and just be like, this is whack. <laughs> But I was there and I figured I'd go with it. And when I embraced like the singing and the chanting, I was like, I was pretty stoked. You know, I was fully out of my element and fully going with the flow and it felt pretty good. And it was a definite experience to hear all of the singing and the chanting. It was pretty magical. Um, and then we did some cool things. We did multiple meditations. We did partner work with strangers in the audience. We did a bunch of stuff and it felt really good. By the end of the day, I was pretty pumped on everything that happened and I was feeling pretty good. And, and I, I was excited that we decided to go and I was fully embracing the, the weirdness, the woo woo, you know, I was embracing the, the weird spiritual vibes and nothing weird happened, right? Nothing bad happened to me, I'm totally fine. Day two was, was pretty rad. So we went home, slept, and then the next day, we went there again. This was the last day, Sunday. We're driving up to day three of the Ramdas retreat. Shouldn't call it the Ramdas retreat. We're driving up to day three of the workshop. It's the last day. It's only a couple hours of stuff. Not sure exactly what's gonna happen, but so far it's been awesome. So I think we're excited for the last day and see how it all wraps up. And uh, we'll report back with a conclusion debriefing, something like that, after this. So. <laughs> oh, great. You're gonna be famous. <laughs> oh, good. I'm going to be so famous because you're going to have like 5 million views. That would be cool. So <laughs>
dropping little nuggets of wisdom. Frank was killing it. Roshi Joan Halifax was killing it. It was awesome. I don't know. I'll probably do a better report than what I'm doing right now, but uh, as of right now, man, I would say it was well worth it and uh, feeling rejuvenated, uh, recharged, refreshed, uh, like I'm on the right path, ready to uh, do good shit out in the world. What did you think? Tell your experience. How was it? It was good. Listening to Ram Dass talk is a practice in patience because it's hard for him to find the words since his stroke that he had. A lot of people, I think, wanted to direct their questions to Ram Dass specifically. You can see him like struggling to find the words. Like he wants to answer, he knows how to answer, but it's hard for him to speak, but then once he kind of found them, then he would just say powerful stuff. And it was awesome to get to see him and the three of them together. The questions part was kind of hard for me because I just want to listen to the three of them talk nonstop. And so part of me feels like it's almost like wasted time when people start sharing their stories um because there are a few people who would just kind of talk for a kind of a long time it's like what she means is talk for way too long <laughs> i'm trying to be really nice <laughs> one thing i noticed is that they would like ramdas or frank or roshi joan would uh, like say something like try to portray a teaching and then someone would share like have a response to it and they would be like okay I know that you said that that maybe the lesson is like f like forgive all people and they'd be like I know that you said that but what about my situation like I don't have to forgive this person and it just kind of I don't know it's just interesting to like hear people's responses and to hear how people take the teachings and then maybe think that it's different for them or something. But overall, probably one of the coolest things that I've done. Like I've hiked a lot of mountains and I've seen a lot of beautiful places, but just getting to be in the presence of three people who it just seems like they kind of have it figured out. You know, like the stories that they've shared and just like the peace and love that they seem to just like it just seems to be a part of them like constantly is like admirable and something that I think is good to work towards. So we don't know if you'll ever be able to, but if you can, go see him again. And if he doesn't exist, look him up on YouTube because he's had hours and hours and hours of wonderful talks. Yeah. And Frank and Rosh Joan Halifax have a ton of stuff online as well. We'll put some links up for you guys down below. Yeah. Namaste. <laughs> Never that though. Uh -uh. So I didn't get some grand revelation from this workshop, right? I, it wasn't some paradigm shift, some crazy thing that happened. It was just that while we were there, I realized that we're on the right path, right? That. I already embrace this idea of living in the moment, right? I already embrace the fact that we are all gonna die and it's all pointless if we're not doing what we care about and hanging out with the people that we love. And so it just reaffirmed that like we're on the right path, right? This is our, our third year in a row where we've traveled to a, another place in the world and lived here just because we want to, right? Because we enjoy getting out of our comfort zone, meeting new people, see different ways of living, to to get inspired, to see new scenery and, and you know, it, it's something that normal people think is crazy. When we tell people that we go and live for months at a time somewhere else, they're like, how do you afford it? How do you do it? How do you make it happen? Like all these questions, don't you worry about your future? What about retirement? What about your friends and family? How do you pay for your house? Like all these different things, all these problems, right? And yeah, all those things are for sure something that you should worry about, but we don't let worrying about them dominate our lives, right? Like we let our passions, the things that we care about and the people that we love guide our decisions. And this workshop showed me that that's like the right way to be, right? To, to 
try to be helpful to other people, to, to give your life to something better by serving others in different ways, to follow your passions, to, to spend time with the people that you love, and to, to have a life of meaning, right? That, that is what we're doing and it's awesome. And so I got pretty inspired by this thing. Hopefully this episode isn't too weird and too boring or too whatever, I don't know. I don't know if people will like this one or they'll hate it, but um, this is something that we did and we wanna share like what we're actually doing here and um, how we're doing it. And this is something that we're doing, right? We've, we're seeking out inspiration in the world to, to continue doing what we're doing. So thanks for watching. Thanks for continuing to support this thing. I appreciate it. Um, if you haven't yet, you should subscribe. There's a little button somewhere down here that's red that says subscribe. You probably already know that, but you should click that. That tells YouTube that you like what we're making and that tells YouTube to show our video to other people and then we can grow the circle of inspiration and motivation and all the other things that end with T-I-O-N. So yeah, again, we appreciate you, thank you. Let me know what you think about this. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Drop a comment, let me know. That's all for today. Thank you very much. Later, I will see you guys on the next episode. Peace.